Okay, we're on to natural deduction now. So, blah, blah, blah. Following questions ask for proof is natural deduction. Please use the proof in the Fitch style. Blah, blah, blah. Don't make up rules. Don't use De Morgan's unless I tell you to, all that sort of stuff. Give okay, a natural deduction proof of this formula. You may use LEM. Um, this was in one of the assignments, but that's okay. I guess I can do it anyway. So, I'm given LEM, P or not P by LEM, and I need to prove P or P implies Q. Well, it looks like the only thing I can really do is do oral elimination on this, right? So, assume P, or introduce to get P or P implies Q. Okay, that was easy. Now let's try the other half. Assume not P, somehow get P or P implies Q. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get P implies Q, and then or introduce to get this term. So my second to last line will be P implies Q, because if I can get this, then I can definitely get this. How do I get P implies Q? Well, I guess I assume P and somehow I get to Q. Well, P and not P, these contradict. And then I can magic a Q out of fresh air by assuming not Q and stealing the false. There we go. So now I better put in my line numbers or the, ex the guy who marked this, that is David, will like dock me a bunch of marks. I don't want that to happen. So I better put in my rules and stuff. Okay, that was true by Lem. That was an assumption or introduction of two. Assumption, assumption, uh, not elimination, lines five and four. I'm going off memory here. You should have a copy of the rules next to you. Uh, assumption, uh, steely the false from line six. Proof by contradiction, lines seven through eight. Assume P, derive Q, therefore P implies Q by implication, introduction, five through nine. Or introduction on ten. Uh, we have P or not P. Assume P, get the thing. Assume not P, get the thing. Therefore, get the thing. Or elimination, line 1, line 2 through 3, line 4 through 11. All right, cool. That's one part of question 2. Uh, what's the next part? Give a natural deduction proof of the following rule, blah. Uh, okay. So I guess I do my usual thing. Uh, I put the thing I want at the very bottom. Exist an x for all y. R x y implies p of y. And I put the thing I'm given at the very top. Exist to x p x. And for all x, for all y, R of x y implies p of y. I have to sum I get from here down to there. Okay, well I can definitely and eliminate for free. That could, that can could never hurt me, so I'm, I'm going to do that. For all x, for all y, <clears throat> r of x, y implies p of y. Okay, what can I do now? Well, I can't for all eliminate from the top because I've got no variable to for all eliminate with. And I can't existence eliminate backwards from the bottom. That's no good. Uh, I can existence eliminate from the top. So to get from here to here, I assume for an arbitrary a, p of a, and then somehow I get all this rubbish. Exists an x for all y, r of x, y implies p of y. Okay. Uh, what now? Well, I know for all x it works, and I know there exists something in my universe, namely a, so I can for all eliminate. So for all y, r of a, y implies p of y, and then I can existence introduce on the a and get what I wanted. Uh, I've left a big gaping gap here, which makes my proof look a bit gross, but, you know, oh well, better to have a bigger gap than a smaller gap, so there we go. Uh, put in my line numbers, and then put in the rules, so th this was given. And elimination line 1, and elimination line 1, an assumption, a something, uh, for all elimination, because we for all eliminated line 3, right? We replaced the X's with A's. And then existence introduction, because if it's true for A, then certainly it's true that there exists an X such that it holds. So existence introduction, line 5. Um, we assumed it works, for, we assumed for an, uh, an arbitrary A, P of A, and proved this. Therefore this, because we know there exists an X, P of X. So existence elimination, line 2, line 4 through 6. There we go. 